I have this beautiful maple slab and I'm gonna turn it into my desk. Let's go. When you're working with live edge slabs, the actual piece sets all your constraints and I'm running into that now. Uh, initially, I wanted a six foot tabletop with a miter fold and a cabinet underneath here with a standoff where the edge of the cabinet lined up with the edge of the desk. I can't really do that anymore. So the reason is, if we have a six foot tabletop and we come to a miter fold here, this is six foot, we have a miter fold on this crack. That creates an issue of alignment and it's just really hard to attach. But now I'm gonna have the cabinet offset so it creates a little tabletop for a printer, that's my plan, and it'll actually just kind of a, give it a cool design aesthetic, I think. I don't, I don't really know, but I think it's gonna look really cool, so let's find out together. I wanna go over what I look for once I have it to this spot in the build. First and foremost, down here, I'm gonna eliminate this bark. Bark will, it looks, I hate the look of the bark. So the bark's gotta come off and it's gonna not be a very difficult process because it's already coming off. So we'll chisel this off. Immediately my attention goes to this rot here. We've got a weird inclusion here, some bark inclusion, rot. Most of this is gonna get filled with epoxy. That's the quick answer. I will clean these out to make it look not messy. I just want it to look clean and as natural as possible that you can get with pouring plastic into a piece of wood. Another thing to consider is that this top has pretty decent rock in it. There's about a half an inch of spacing here. It's actually not that bad considering this run. I'm fortunate enough to have a big CNC to flatten this on, but if you don't have a CNC, you can make a slab flattening sled or jig. But I'm gonna get this thing flattened out Hopefully we can be to about a half or an inch and a half thick when we're done. It might be an inch and a quarter. I think that'll be just fine for this desk. But the next thing we're gonna do is cut our miter fold cut. We're gonna do a straight cut and then we'll add our miters after the straight cut. Let's go. of the desk are off the CNC. We ended up having to go a bit thinner than I had planned, but like I said, you kind of have to work with what the wood gives you when it comes to salvaged live edge wood. We went down an inch and a quarter, but I actually really like the look of it. I don't really want a thick, chunky top on this either way. So I card scraped this spot. There's a little burning from the CNC, but look how gorgeous this is. That's gonna be my desk and I'm real excited about it. So that is a, just a ton of figure. Anyway, I'm gonna get this prepped for epoxy. So cue dope montage. I just got the rough sand done and the epoxy cleanup. Those are the worst parts of the whole job. In my opinion, I hate dealing with epoxy and sanding sucks. So uh, the rough part of that is done. Now I'm just laying out these barbells and this is the position I want them to all be in. And I, I made these barbells just for this. I've never done this before and I made another video on how I did that and you can check that out if you want to. These are going to be used to keep this crack from separating farther and basically help stabilize what is gonna become the mitered waterfall leg. I wanted to use these over bow ties because I'm kind of frankly tired of doing bow ties and I wanted to try something new and I wanted to have some brass accents in this. Honestly, I wanted to try it on a project that's for myself and not a client's and I think it's gonna look really slick. So let's get this going.
leg is in clamps. The waterfall looks really good. This is always stressful for me. It doesn't matter how many times I've done these, every single time I start getting sweaty and stressing out and worrying that I missed anything, but it, it came out really nice. The joint is good. The angle is good. Everything's great. But let's start from the top here and go down this whole thing. First, I put some calls here to keep these two pieces from shifting on each other. Everything should be fine, but we just did a lot of movement to this wood and it could upset the wood and it could move. So these are holding these in place. Also, I don't have the brass barbells in because I don't want to mar them or damage them. So I'm going to do that last. That'll, well, one of the last things we'll do is put the barbells in. Those will go in with epoxy. Coming down here, you can see that we use these miter clamping jigs and they work great. I have another video on how I made these. And if you can't look at these and figure out how to make them, <laughs> go watch that video. It's really simple how to make these, but they are clutch for gluing up mitered waterfalls. And I'm using clamps to hold the jig in place. And then the clamps, the, the parallel clamps are pulling it all together. Squeeze out came out perfect. We got a perfect 90. I couldn't be happier with the results here. And it looks great. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. I like it. This is some real wood nerd stuff right now. <laughs> like, this is incredibly satisfying to see this grain wrap continue around this miter here. It feels really good. This went really well. I'm super happy with this. Everything lined up great and the joint is so tight. I've got some extra pieces of wood from the same tree and I'm going to start breaking this down and milling it up to make the box for the cabinet. This bigger piece is 74 inches long. I'm gonna break this down into three 24 inch long, roughly, pieces. So we're just doing a rough breakdown right now. So I'm gonna throw some markings on here. I'm gonna go at like 24 and a half, and then go from that line, I'll do the same. Actually, I'll come in from the other side, split the difference, 24 and a half. So I'm gonna hit at these lines, rip this out, and then I'm gonna, uh, or I'm gonna cross cut these out, and then I'm gonna rip these down into three planks, roughly five and three quarters, as much as I can get out of them. So we'll have one, two, three here, and then we're gonna resaw those ones down in half. So we'll end up with two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 planks of wood that are about the length we need them to be. All the boards have been resawed, and I just stacked and stickered them. This is just a way to keep the wood from getting all twisted and bowed over the next few days. So these are gonna sit here like this, and we are ready to move on to the next step. All right, I've got all the wood milled up and ready to make the panels for the cabinets. This is the orientation I'm gonna glue this panel up in, and this is the orientation I'm gonna glue this panel up in. Quite honestly, this is a much prettier set of panels <laughs> than this one. So these are gonna be the bottom, and no one's ever gonna see it, but I'm gonna get going and getting these made into one panel now. I wanna get these nice and coated. I don't want these to be oversaturated, but I definitely don't want them to be starving joints at all. I want this to have some nice squeeze out coming out of here. I'm not really wrenching on these. These don't need to be just absolutely Godzilla mode slammed onto here because what'll happen is it'll put pressure in the center and things can start to come up and move around. So you really just need to get enough on here to get squeeze out. And one thing I wanna look for is making sure that nothing's raised up so we don't have any unevenness 
that I'll have to fix with the sander later. These are all staying perfectly flat and I'm getting really good squeeze out everywhere. It looks great, I'm really happy with this. With the panels and clamps, I wanted to start working on this desktop and the desktop's gonna have some really cool features that I wanted to share. First, there's gonna be a power cord pass through here. Uh, that is a cool design that I've used on another project and I'm really excited to share that with, with you guys. It's gonna look really cool. The other thing is this pop-up power grommet from Doug Mocket Company. What I'm doing here is making what I call a perimeter template. I've made this little block of wood which is an analog for the pop-up power grommet. This is gonna go in here and I'm going to build a perimeter template around that piece of wood so that I can remove all the waste in here when I take this piece out. And all I'm gonna use is double-sided tape to hold this down. It's really easy and it works really well. I wanted to take a moment to thank Doug Mocket Company for sponsoring this video. I've been using their products for the past couple of years, but they've been in business for over 40. And they've got a bunch of products and accessories that you can use to finish up your furniture or cabinet pieces. From drawer poles to pop-up grommets to table legs, they've got a wide variety of things that you can choose from on their site. And I'll put a link for both the items I use for this project down below in the description. Now that the pocket for the flush mount power grommet is in, I'm gonna start doing the power cord pass through. I've got everything set up over here. I'm using this tape. This is for the Shaper Origin. If you don't know anything about this, check out the video I made on the Shaper Origin. But this basically helps the machine know where it's at in space. We're not gonna actually start here though. We're gonna cut the male part of the inlay first. So let's go over here to the workstation and get that cut out. I'm gonna be cutting out three parts. There's a disc and then two rectangles with radiuses on the end. So let's get this going real quick. panels for the cabinet are out of clamps and now I'm going to roughly cut this down. I needed to get myself a nice straight edge here so I set up the tracks off for that. Then I'm going to cut these down to their proper widths and their proper lengths and then we're going to run them through the drum sander and get them roughly sanded so I can get rid of the excess glue and any of the unevenness that's in here. This will probably remove like a 30 second of material total. The box for the cabinet is going to be joined with miters and I'm gonna be using the domino for that. The domino will add some strength, but mostly I'm gonna be using the dominoes for alignment for this so that it keeps the joinery coming together smooth because I'm gonna be doing this by myself. So that'll help me out a lot in that process. This is an offcut from the main desk and I want to use this for my drawer fronts and what's really appealing about it to me is that I can have a continuous grain down my drawer fronts. It's actually going to be flipped 90 degrees so it won't look exactly like this, it'll look like that. But the point is, is I want to start marking this up and cutting it down to the rough size that I'm going to need for those drawer fronts and start getting epoxy in here to start stabilizing this because as you can see it's not in great shape.
Right now I'm gonna set up to lay out my drawer fronts. So the cabinet, which is back there, is a frameless with a full overlay drawer front. So our height is gonna be 20 inches on this because that's the full height of the cabinet. And because we're doing a full overlay, we're gonna be hiding the actual box with the drawer fronts. We've gotta get 24 inches of width, which we have plenty of here. And we've gotta get 20 inches of height, like I just said, which we have plenty of here. I'm gonna cut the 20 high by 24 inch wide piece with my track saw right now. And then we're gonna use the table saw to break it down to the three drawer fronts. This is gonna have three drawer fronts. And those, the curves of the blade will be the reveals between these. So it'll look like a continuous grain. It'll look like you're looking at this piece of wood on the front of that box. And since this piece of wood is so thick and because I want this to look good, <laughs> I'm gonna cut this down in size by resawing it. This is about an inch and a half right now. Actually, it's close to an inch and three quarters right now. I'm gonna resaw this down to like 13 sixteenths or seven eighths of an inch so that when I'm final dimensioning it, it goes down to three quarters of an inch thick. the drawer fronts cut out, it's time to whip out a quick toe kick for the cabinet. the carcass I forgot to cut out the rabbit for the back panel first so I'm gonna use my router table and a rabbiting bit to do that basically I'm just gonna take the back side which is down here and run it around this bit and it's gonna cut a rabbit on the inside profile of the back it will leave a rounded corner which I do not want because this is such a angular straight line build I'm gonna go back and clean that up with chisels once the rabbit is in I'm gonna start setting the undermount slides and for that, I'll just use two spacers to get those equally spaced apart because the drawer boxes are all the same height. And then once the drawer boxes are in, I'm gonna start setting up the drawer faces, which is gonna look really slick, and I'll show you how to do that up next. In the interest of making this look really uniform and really nice, I'm gonna make a jig. And this jig is gonna allow me to drill holes in the back here that are big enough to use my self-centering drill bit and attach screws to the back to the face front or the drawer front. It's a drawer front, it's not a face front. No one calls it that. Anyway, we're gonna attach it to the, to the drawer front that way. So I'm gonna take this scrap piece of wood that fits right in here. And the height of this is two inches. So to split that difference, I'm gonna go to one inch up and randomly I chose four inches in. So let's go cut this on the drill press and make a jig. Like I said, we're gonna use that same drill bit to drill through this. I'm gonna use a sacrificial board here, clamp this in place, make sure I don't interfere with where I'm drilling through. Okay, that's good. Throw another clamp on here. Now I'm gonna set my lowest drawer front first and kind of make sure, I'm gonna use this little shim here. Make sure it's off just a little bit. There we go. There's some crud underneath the box on the, on the workbench here. So that's, that's right where I want it to be. Now that I've got that in place, I'm gonna find where those holes are we just did and I'm gonna set this clamp here and clamp this in place. That's good, we got clearance, yeah. And then set this other one. There we go. 
So I'm gonna go in here like this. Okay, do the same thing here. Okay, and with that oversized hole, it allows me to make adjustment to the drawer front if I need to. Hopefully I won't have to, but knowing myself, I will need to. <laughs> okay, pop that off. The second drawer front is basically the same as the first drawer front. I set my eighth inch gap there. Find my location here. And the nice thing about these undermount slides is they are adjustable. So if anything's not 100% exact with your space here, you can adjust these up and down if you have the right clips. But I'm gonna get these set real quick. And then it's on to the last drawer front. Oh, that looks good already. Man, that looks nice. Put our spacer in. And now this is where it gets tricky because I can't, I can't attach a clamp here because, for, sorry, I'm like amazed that this is like perfectly flush. <laughs> It looks really good, uh, but I can't put a clamp here because there's a box in the way. So what we're gonna do is put some double-sided tape on the drawer box, avoid these holes, and then I'm gonna attach the drawer front to that and then pull it off and screw it in. You're probably asking yourself where these drawer boxes came from. <laughs> That's a really good question. I cut these out on the CNC. This build is more about the desk than it is the drawers and the boxes. So I wanted it to be done as quickly as possible. And I have a CNC to do that. So I did do them on the CNC. However, I do want to do a video on showing you how I build cabinets without the CNC in the future. But these were done on the CNC for the sake of expediency. That's nice. I like that. <laughs> Nothing here is finished because I was sure I was going to ding something up. So now I'm going to go back, take this all apart, get the finish on here. I'm going to attach the toe kick. I'm going to attach the backer. And then it's time to start working on the brass for the desk. I gotta get the brass rod standoffs done and the brass barbell inlays done. And I need to attach the drawer pulls. These drawer pulls are also from Doug Mockett, just like the power pop-up grommet. We are really close to getting this thing wrapped up. This desk build was quite the journey, and you can tell by the multiple wardrobe changes that it was about eight days all said and done. But it was totally worth it. I could not be happier with this desk. It really is my dream desk. It's got the grain match fronts, the perfect grain match waterfall, the brass rod risers, the brass inlays, the inlaid cord management, the power pop-up. It is so great. I love this desk. I'm super happy about it. In fact, I'm recording this voiceover sitting in front of the desk right now. It's not often that I get to make projects for myself, but when I get to, it feels really good and it's super rewarding and it just reminds me why I love woodworking so much. <laughs>